Hello and welcome to this part of Level Helper tutorial series. In this part we're going to talk about how to create a character using a bone structure. After you have created your sprite atlas with all the character body parts, drag each part on the canvas and put them at an appropriate location. While this is not necessary, you can organize your parts in a more logical hierarchy. Drag the lower arm over the upper arm and the hand over the lower arm to create the left arm hierarchy. Do the same to the right arm and the legs and place each body part in the correct angle and position. Change the Z order to affect which part should be on top or in the back. Once you are ready, go to the plus button in the scene navigator and choose skeletal structure. A root bone will be created, from which we will make the entire skeleton. Place it somewhere near your character. Now select all parts and drag them on top of the nodes object located inside the root bone. Hold Ctrl key to reveal the sub bone creation anchor. Click on this anchor and drag to create a sub bone for the bone of which the anchor belongs to. When you release the mouse button, if a sprite is located under the new bone, you'll be asked if you want to connect the new bone with that sprite. Click on the sprite name to connect or outside of the menu to ignore it. Because the connections are unlocked, you can rotate and move bones to a suitable location if needed. Once you lock the connections, when you rotate a bone, the connected sprite will move with it. Create a remaining bone structure for your character. If you create a bone too large, you can change the height property to change its length. When you create a new bone and there is no sprite under it, or you want to make an additional connection, you can use the Add Connection option in the Bone Properties. Just drag from the connection pin to the sprite. Set up a minimum and maximum angles for each bone by choosing appropriate values. The angle values are local to the bone. The red line represents 0 degrees. If a sprite does not rotate correctly, you can unlock the connections and move the bone to a more suitable location. While the connections are unlocked, you can also move the sprites. Or, by disabling the rigid property, which means a bone can also be moved, not just rotated, you can drag the bone, which will also move the sprite. Continue with setting the limit angles. Give your bone suitable names by pressing enter on each bone in the scene navigator or by selecting the bone and changing the unique name property in the generic properties inspector. Do a test animation to see your character in motion. Go to the animations inspector tab, write an animation name and press enter. Choose play on load and change the petitions to zero to make it looping. Click on the animator button to show the animations editor. Next to the animation, click on the anchor button to keep this animation in the editor even when the object to which the animation belongs to gets unselected. Click on the record button to be allowed to add keyframes. Add one key to the beginning and one to the end of the animation. Move the slider to the middle and rotate each bone in the skeletal structure. Click to add a keyframe when you are done. 
with the slider we're going to simulate or preview mode will make the character move. In the next part we will talk about how to use the existing skeletal structure on a different character. I hope you have enjoyed this part of the tutorial series. Have fun!